Token Metrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com. Hi, we are live. Welcome to the Market Update Show. I'm your host, Bill Noble, and this show is sponsored by tokenmetrics.com. Welcome, Silent Sandal from Greece, 05 Renegade, first on the stream. Dominic, okay, Blitz, Flipper, Burger. Hi there. Hi, hi, hi. If you need a roadmap in crypto and you need to make money in crypto, then like and subscribe our channel. Token Metrics and tokenmetrics.com can help you, okay? Navigate, buy, sell, and figure out what to do in crypto and when. So we're not an investment advisory service, but we are a kick-ass YouTube show and we are a great software as a service company. So today on the market update, we're going to be addressing all the problems with the Federal Reserve, the stuff that's going on in legacy and the virus. So with that said, let's dive in to the market update. There's a saying in legacy that goes way, way back. It's called don't fight the Fed. Today, the Federal Reserve was on the tape talking tough about inflation. So two or three days ago, we had an, oh my God, about the virus. Then there was an everything is all right trade. And now we're back to, oh my God, the Fed is going to stop printing money. And that's hurting legacy and spilling over into Bitcoin. How do you make sense of it all? Well, you come right here, you hit the like button and I'll help you out. Okay, let's start off with stocks. All right. I know this is an altcoin service, but we got to talk about it a little. So the stock market is over levered, right? Basically too many people making too many bullish bets, thinking things are going up forever. I was told yesterday by a very smart person that the original red candle lower created in certain parts of the equity market as much damage as what was created in March of 2020. So that's right. It only took a little decline in stocks to create a lot of damage. Now, what does this mean for crypto? I'm guessing it means Bitcoin isn't going anywhere because like it or not, Bitcoin and stocks are probably tied together. This, the fear index in the legacy market. All right. Thought it was over yesterday. And for the second day in a row, VIX is surprising. And fear is now back above its top Bollinger Band. Now, normally, normally, at least the last time back in September, that meant a top. So the second day above the top Bollinger Band produced a top in VIX. So here's how I'm playing it. If VIX and fear top today or tomorrow, then that's probably crypto positive. If fear accelerates, then there's something wrong in the equity market. And if there's something wrong in the equity market, it's going to affect the speculative fires in crypto. So if you've got trading view, it's VIX, okay, for an index, or it's ES1 for the S&P futures contracts. You don't have that, keep an eye on QQQ during the day because for the next two or three days, most likely whatever happens in equities is going to affect crypto. Also of note is the dollar. This has been the biggest sort of pain trade for Bitcoin over the last, say, three months. Everybody knows and everybody thinks a dollar should go lower. And unfortunately, if everyone thinks the same thing, it's wrong. So instead of going lower, the dollar has actually done nothing but go up in November. People are afraid of higher rates. 
People are afraid of something going wrong in the financial system. There can be all kinds of different reasons why the dollar would go up. Now on charts, right now the dollar index is at 96. It could go to 100 if the uptrend continues, and I emphasize if. So if the dollar is going up, that's going to stop Bitcoin from going up, and that could stop ETH from making a new all-time high. All right. If the dollar sits still, that could be good for ETH and layer ones. So stable stocks, stable dollar, and we can go back to the crypto rally without the legacy drama. Okay, Bitcoin stuck at 58. This is the level I was looking at. My colleague Forrest yesterday had kind of a strategy, very, very well done in my opinion. So check that video out from yesterday. Forrest basically said that, you know, if Bitcoin could take out 60K, make a return move, it can then turn around and go higher. My take on that is that's, that's true. But right now, Bitcoin is trading like it's stuck at 58K. So I don't think Bitcoin is the place to be for crypto upside, assuming there is crypto upside during the month of December. Crypto in December is either going to be altcoin moving with Bitcoin sitting still or everything sitting still to going lower because of the Fed and stocks. Now, let's look at interest rates. Here's some good news for crypto. Interest rates are falling. This is the interest rate on the U.S. 10-year note. So again, stable dollar, stable stocks with rates falling is really good for crypto. That's good for crypto. Rates going up is the most toxic thing for the crypto space. So everything that's happening in legacy is like, ooh, booga booga scary, but it's not as bad for crypto as what you might think. So there could be some BTFD opportunities in the space, which I'll get to in a minute. Now, Ethereum. Oh, man. I mean, raise your hand out there if you thought this thing was going to like blow through 4,800 and go to 5,000. <laughs> Seriously. I'm like, oh, thank God it's finally happening, right? And of course, stocks dump and ETH turns around and finds resistance at 4,700. That said, that said, people may be buying the dip in ETH because I think the layer ones are about to make a comeback. Okay. Coinbase NFTs and uh, ETH being burned, supply reduction. You've heard all this. Okay. The only thing you haven't heard is basically show me the money, show me the breakout in ETH. Is it going to happen today? No. But the second stocks stop going down. ETH is probably going to take off on an outright basis and versus Bitcoin. Speaking of ETH versus Bitcoin, a breakout is finally happening. So there was a big triangle, a small triangle, a small diamond, and that has propelled ETH above the top line of the big triangle. So in 10 words or less, ETH could go up and Bitcoin could go down in December. That's right. You heard it here first, right? Normally ETH outperforms on the upside, like Bitcoin will go up 2% and ETH will go up 6 That's possible. But it could also be possible that Bitcoin could go lower, like fall 5% while ETH rallies 20%. So is this the dawn of ETH in December? Could ETH lead all layer ones and altcoins? The answer is yes. Now, one of the other reasons why you might suspect that the layer one trade is on is that AVAX is up as the rest of the market is down. This is a four-hour chart of the Avalanche perpetual contract. Decent bid to this. They tried to hit it near 100 and 102. They went down there. They ran stops. They pounded it, pounded it, pounded it. Bulls held. And I can see this thing turning around and going to 170 absent some sort of total crypto crash, right? Retail headed into the end of the year and institutions are going to want to get involved in this ecosystem. And anybody who missed it at 102 probably is going to start paying up because this trend could resume if, if the market is okay. All right. Speaking of 
interesting layer one plays. I went to the tokenmetrics.com rankings page for layer ones or smart contract platforms. And lo and behold, I found Soul. Okay, so our computer system is thinking maybe Soul has a layer one aspect to it in addition to NFTs and gaming. And wouldn't you know, Soul happens to be up today. We discussed this as one of our metaverse coins in this sort of like metaverse stew that we've been cooking on the stream for the last week as part of our holiday promotion. So support at 290, and this is a big theme. It's not happening in every coin, but it is a theme that when you see something stuck and consolidating below resistance, when it turns, you get a really good green candle. So, you know, souls outperforming today. So if there's a dip, this could be a move to 580, right? There are going to be winners in the metaverse and layer ones between now and the end of the year. Now, is figuring out which ones difficult? Yes. Is our, our team working on this? Absolutely. Feverishly, in fact, stay tuned for Thursday's live stream at this time where our fundamental analysts and Forrest will be presenting some of their ideas on altcoins. And of course, during the market update, I will be bringing you as much quality and quantity as I can. Now, Sandbox, big question is, if you're on Kraken, right, or you're on Coinbase and you're looking to trade either Decentraland or Sandbox, or frankly, anything that you get your hands on without a huge gas fee in the metaverse, the question is, is there going to be a big dip or are we looking at the dip right now? That is the big question. So I'm going to be bold and I'm going to tell you this. In Sandbox, I'm looking at like 660. Okay, that's the 62% retracement of the last spurt up. So if 662 or 660 holds as support, you can have confidence to move into Sandbox. If 660 doesn't hold and Sandbox goes down, there might be a way to get Sandbox at either five or possibly four. So if you've got capital on the sidelines and you can trade this coin in an affordable way, there may be a way to DCA into this, have a small position around six and buy more at four if you get a wipeout in this market. I know my colleague Forrest is a big fan and he's right about getting good projects at good entry points. So in a way, <laughs> In a way, in the metaverse, I'm almost hoping that they kind of wash it all out, right? Because it's just a bigger opportunity to get involved. In the meantime, 660 is the level in sandbox to consider a small, long trade, not investment advice. RMRK, something we like on a fundamental basis. Our research guys are working on this. They think it has potential. Okay, again, not investment advice, but there's resistance at 37 and it's consolidating just below it. Now, if there's a blowout in the market, there's support below at 25. Personally, I'd be looking at the next green candle you see in this as an opportunity to maybe get involved, right? Assuming the stock market does not fall apart, there's opportunity here, okay, to get involved below 37. All right. Now, with that said, no matter how good we like the chart or the fundamentals, if equities get wrecked or if Bitcoin gets wrecked because equities get wrecked, I want you to have levels below the market in a smaller number of coins. So for this market update, rather than rapid firing through 60 charts, I want you to have a couple charts where you have levels you can watch. Okay. Watch for green candles below resistance in top coins, okay? And if everything gets wrecked watching ES1, then know where you want to either stop out or add to positions, okay? The, the day to do the risk management lecture is the day or week before any potential problem. Clearly, one of the reasons why equities are trading the way they were 
is nobody was doing risk management over there because it's time for cruise control at the end of the year. Crypto doesn't have the luxury of cruise control. So manage your risk, know where you want to buy below the market. Okay. And know where you want to buy if equity stabilize. Okay. Decentraland, couple ways to look at this. Four and a half or four could be the level to enter. Okay. Again, not investment advice. So if there's a washout in Decentraland because of washout on Coinbase, you know, that four, four and a half level is really where you got that final thrust. All right. Where there may have been some FOMO. So if they wash out the FOMO, that's where you want to be grabbing it between four and four and a half. I think the worst case scenario, okay, would be a flush to say three and a half, right? Because that's where the rally really took off from. So if you need to manage risks, I would think stops need to be below three and a half. Yeah, I know that's a lot of risk to take. I get it. Nobody wants to lose a dollar or two dollars on a four dollar coin, but you have to manage risk. You have to know where you want to buy the dip if you've got capital. Because upside in these coins, if speculative fever picks up into January, could be substantial. So one of the other important things to do on a red day is to remind yourself why you wanted to buy it to begin with, right? In other words, if the world gets a little bit depressing or if people want to have fun, they're going to do it in the metaverse. And don't forget, Facebook's not playing around. You see the social media giants shuffling themselves. The CEO of Twitter moving over to Square, probably to get Bitcoin going and move it through Twitter and have Twitter be like a payment portal or a commerce portal for Bitcoin. Don't doubt it. Don't doubt that the Web 2.0 guys are going to get involved not only in the metaverse, but they're going to get involved in e-commerce as well using Bitcoin and other big coins. Okay, Luna. Very grateful, okay? I talked about this going up and I, I got at least a part of the move. So on down days, it does look like people get worried and they want to start parking money in stable coins. So there is an accumulation cone going on in Luna. So yesterday I was talking about DeFi being a narrow trade. In other words, there are going to be a handful of either layer ones or DeFi protocols that do well. I also notice Ave is picking up steam, right? Ave may have bottomed. I don't have the chart here, but there are going to be winners in pockets in DeFi, not across the board. But if you've got tokens or projects that have either been destroyed or are consolidating, those, those coins could take off. And Luna may be one of those plays. So if Luna takes out, you know, say 62, Luna can run and it's done so before. Okay. So nothing has happened here since September. And I'm thinking that this is a good trade. If you get a breakout above 62 and then a return move for bump and run theory. In other words, don't buy against resistance on the way up in a DeFi coin. Right, you want to see it break out, return, prove itself, and then you get involved. Okay, Solana. Yesterday we were discussing this. Solana, you know, bottomed at 180 where we had support. It went up, it came back off yesterday. Now Solana's trying to go green again following ETH. I get the sense that big players want to own the layer ones into year end, particularly since they're, they're basically, you know, 10, 20% off their highs. Solana is probably going back to 280, assuming no stock market problem. If, if Solana is below 180, then I would take that as a sign that there's something wrong with the crypto market, honestly. Right? ETH flies around between 4,000 and 4,700. Okay. So I don't know if you can use ETH as a barometer for the whole market, unless, of course, it's breaking out. So on the downside, I think 180 in Solana is the level to focus on. Honestly, I think people are going to buy the dip in this 
unless there's a problem. Okay, smart contract platforms, the ranking system from tokenmetrics.com. When is the best time to do research? When the market's down, okay? When is the best time to look for lower cap plays or mid cap plays that could be interested while the market's getting hit? When it's down. So I've been metaverse, metaverse, metaverse all, you know, last couple of days. But I do want to remind you on tokenmetrics.com, you can look through smart contracts. You can also sort it by market cap. And you can also just look at what the top rated coins are. So when is the best time to look at these rankings? Well, maybe the day or two after a decline to see which coins turn around Keep a token metrics grade above, say, 75 or 80 and keep trending up. So when I looked at this, when I saw a soul, okay, at the top of the rankings and I saw that continuing to be green, that's when I came to the conclusion that some of the layer ones may actually lead. And lo and behold, soul is up 15% today. So you can't catch everything. You can't watch everything. But you can stay tuned on this YouTube channel, hit that like and subscribe button, and we can keep you up to date as to what's happening. All right. Let me see how all our, my friends out there are doing. Let's go Solana, baby. Okay. Full name for Soul. Let me, let me get there. Okay. I want to say it's Phantasma. Phantasma. All right. Uh, target for soul. Hmm. Interesting question. Let's see if I can pull up the chart and let's have a look as to what can happen here. This is a good question because when I did this chart, it was up 15%. It's now up 22%. So let's see if I can bring this chart up and we can take a look because I want to start adding more interaction to our interactions give you some love and answer your questions. Cause I know you come here because you need help research and I'd be happy to give it to you. So for soul, it looks like support is at 290. All right. And the next level on the upside is 580. Now <laughs> don't want to create unnecessary FOMO because I know how easy it is to buy on green days. But as I look at what I call levels above the market, so notice I'm not using the word target because that's kind of investment advice-ish. But I am noticing that if this starts to be a mega trend, you could have 580 or 9 above the market. So if this goes like Vulcan or if this goes Axie Infinity, those would be the levels that I would look at and say, okay, that's what we're looking at. All right. I invested in Seoul two years ago. Good for you, Beast. Seoul is only a 370 million market cap, according to Farid. Guys, really appreciate you coming to the stream today. Please keep hitting that like button. We want to get 2,000 likes on one of our streams. All right. We're trying to get that like button up so we can continue to bring you the best research possible for as long as possible. Now, Whale says, will the market get affected by new virus news? Good question. Here's what I was thinking yesterday. It's not clear whether the Omicron variant is, I don't know, super dangerous or is just different from the other variants. So I would take my cue from Jerome Powell, believe it or not. You know, it's almost like Dr. Jerome is going to be the ultimate arbiter of how markets react to the virus. If Jerome Powell comes in and says, I'm talking tough on inflation and I'm not going to move monetary policy based on virus and shutdown fears, he starts shutting off the printing press, that's negative crypto. If Jerome Powell or virus news develops 
where the Fed has to suddenly back off or send a signal that they're not as hawkish, okay, that actually gets crypto moving on the upside. In sum, you know what? It's really hard to get accurate virus information. Every day, it seems like the, sto the story is changing, and I'm not a doctor. So the best way to follow what's going on with the virus is to either listen to the Fed or watch stocks. All right, folks, that's it for today. I'm going to get more and more interactive each day as I can. So continue to hit that like button. I want to thank our sponsor, tokenmetrics.com, for giving me the opportunity to bring you this research. This is Bill Noble, your host from tokenmetrics.com. I will see you tomorrow for another market update show. Thank you.